I love to listen to people. I actually think that it's one of the biggest gifts that you can give someone. But I also think that listening isn't enough by itself. If I care about someone and they are living in fear or believing lies about the world or about themselves, I can't just listen. If I care about someone, I have to tell them the truth. Because fear doesn't set us free. Lies don't set us free. The truth sets us free. When I was a senior in high school, I believed a lot of lies. Lies like I thought I could hold my family together. Lies like I thought I could stay in a relationship that was pulling me away from God. It didn't take long for these lies to start crumbling. But as they crumbled, I didn't find the truth. I found bigger lies. I found and internalized the lie that I was nothing but my shame and my failures. The lie that I should be able to hold it all together. The lie that my suffering was the punishment for my many mistakes. I swallowed the lie that God was done with me, so I should be too. When the truth came, it wasn't gentle. It wasn't warm and comforting. It didn't feel good. The truth came as a loud knock on my family's apartment door. I didn't hear it, so my parents answered, and they were shocked to find a cop on the other side of the door looking for me. They were even more shocked to find out why he was there. Earlier that day, I decided to hurt myself, and I had told a friend. The friend called 911. And when I opened the locked bathroom door and everyone knew the truth, all I could do was cry and cry and cry. A few days later, I was back in school. No one knew what happened. But this guy, a guy I only had one class with, came up to me. He said that he had noticed that I had been looking really sad lately. He said, why don't you try praying about it? I was a little taken aback, but I thought, well, why not? I tried everything else. So that night, I told God the truth. I told him about the lies that I had believed and about the mistakes and about the shame. And I told him that I just couldn't carry it anymore. And then Jesus took it all away from me. In those very moments, he lifted it all off of me. All the shame, all the lies, all of it. I felt so different. I physically felt lighter. And there, on my knees, on my back porch, I recommitted myself to Christ, to the truth who could set me free. After that, I couldn't get enough of Jesus. When I arrived at Allegheny College, I was like, okay, where are the Christians? Where are the Christian clubs? And I got involved pretty quickly. And then something happened that really surprised me. Even though I had always been a quiet person, people started saying that they saw me as a leader. They asked me to apply for the leadership team of our fellowship. I did that. And then they suggested that I apply for the Ocean City Beach Project. I did that. And then they asked me to come back as a student intern and run the house. I did that. And then people started wondering out loud if I would apply to be a CCO fellow. Seriously, I never thought of myself as a leader, but step by step, God revealed that the truth wasn't just for me. I had been set free so that I could also help others be free. And I'll tell you the truth. The lies still came and they still come. But the voices of the people who love me and the power of God's word helps me to resist them or sometimes to repent for believing them and start again. Because here's the thing, the lies are strong, but the truth is Jesus and Jesus is mighty and Jesus wants to set everyone free.